So friends, the uh, mention of uh, George Bernard Shaw uh, in the context of uh, being an Ir Irish person at the same time being non-Irish also because his uh, uh, concerns are broader, uh, we uh, referred to uh, in the previous uh, you know part of the discussion uh, to his book, uh, The Quintessence of Ibsenism, because he was an admirer of Ibsen, the Norwegian play playwright, uh, and he cannot be fitted strictly in the Irish tradition. Irish tradition is, is the tradition of ritual, is the tradition of great houses, is, is, is the tradition of uh, cultural, you know, uh, artifacts, cultural symbols uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, honor, uh, rituals. All these are not there so far as Shaw is concerned. Shaw is a socialist writer and Shaw uh, is a great critic of, uh, you know, the, the past in that sense. He wants to understand the past. He wants to see its strengths as well as weaknesses, but he would like to, uh, in fact, emphasize the weaknesses more so that the past can be, uh, you know, understood and after that should be got over, uh, after, after that, you know, uh, should be liberated from by, by, by the writer. So, uh, he is that kind of a writer uh, and uh, he is uh, uh, not to be easily handled even by socialists because uh, he, uh, his main uh, point of uh, distinction uh, in, in, his, in literary writing is that he will question, he will laugh at people, he, he will make them uncomfortable, he will use language in such a manner that people uh, not merely feel amused but also uh, you know, rattled. So that is what uh, Shaw is for us, uh, uh, famously, popularly he is known as GBS, George Bernard Shaw. So Shaw aspired to a dramatic reflection of Dickens's comic energy. Now, oh, this is a good phrase, comic energy. You see, comedy is one thing, uh, crack, cracking jokes is uh, one thing, but having an energy uh, generated by humor, that is something that is rare in writing and uh, Dickens is the master of comic energy and Shaw, you know, wanted to write like Dickens. Dickens wrote uh, novels in the, in the 19th century and he was rage in the 19th century uh, reading audience, but then Bernard Shaw found him very appealing for his own case of uh, writing plays. So he was, uh, he, he wanted to reflect the uh, comic energy. You know, comic energy is that uh, you, you uh, have a joke, you, you have a twist of words, that then that energy is generated in the person and the person wants to, the reader or, or, or the viewer wants to then, uh, you know, use it for understanding things in a different way. Political observation. Very few of the uh, common people would have political observations. They merely, uh, you know, uh, say it is good or it is bad and it is useless or, or it does not have any, any purpose to serve. You can say all those things. But observation means clearly uh, uh, understanding, identifying the negative and positive features and making an opinion. So, uh, he has an opinion and he wants to share that opinion with the audience. And the subversive power to deflate composite, pomposity. Good phrase is uh, subversive power. Subversive power is that, you know, it disturbs you uh, strongly. It subverts, it, 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 it uh, in fact, uh, goes very near uh, decimating, uh, you know, uh, killing or, or destroying. That is subversive power. And uh, what is the deflating pomposity? Most of us, you know, use words as if uh, the, those, those words are very important and they want to impress people with the bombastic words as we call it in India. So, if somebody is using that kind of language, uh, then you know Shaw would laugh at him and Shaw would say, take it easy, uh, do, do not think that what you say is the truth, uh, it, it might be an opinion and it might be a light opinion. So, uh, whenever he come, comes across in, in, the, in the plays, a uh, pompous person, a person who thinks very high of himself, then he starts laughing at him and he says, this is ridiculous. So, that is what Bernard Shaw is for us and he is a representative of a kind of attitude in the uh, 20th century. I took up in, in, the, in the lecture uh, the, the play Major Barbara. Major Barbara, uh, you know, has a kind of a military organization to lead. It is not a military organization in the real sense of the word. Uh, she is running uh, an organization, social organization, uh, which is to help poor people, but she is a major there in, the, in that uh, organization and uh, that is why people, uh, you know, call, call her Major Barbara. 
and this play uh, also is named after her. So, Major Bhavara, the play, explores the conflict and the ultimate mutual ascent of a strong willed father and his equally strong minded daughter. So, if, if in one word one has to uh, you know uh, define this play, it is a, it's a play uh, in which the clash of uh, clash between a father and daughter occurs and both of them are adamant, both of them think that they are right and who will win? That is the uh, you know uh, central theme of the play. Whosoever wins, maybe they, they will agree later on, who knows and uh, the, the play in that sense is a debating exercise, it is a debating venture and if, if you uh, you know uh, look back in the, uh, to the 20th century with a critical eye, then you would think that uh, the uh, central aspect of uh, literature in the 20th century was debate. It was not preaching, not that one, one person stood up and said, okay, this is right and the other thing is wrong. In fact, uh, people in the 20th century always discussed, always deferred, uh, always had a kind of dialogue where uh, the energy of thinking would be uh, generated by this strong discussion. So, Bernard Shaw was a master in that particular category. So, uh, we uh, thought about it, we uh, dealt with uh, one play and, and we uh, talked about the overall you know uh, dramatic intervention of Bernard Shaw in the 20th century. Then comes T. S. Eliot, the famous T. S. Eliot <coughs> who uh, was an American but he came to England, he settled down there and he uh, you know uh, adopted, he, he uh, you know uh, embraced a, a different religion that then, then, then he was born to in America and he became Anglo-Catholic, that is what he called himself. Once again like all others, he is also born in the 19th century, uh, 1888 and he dies in 1965. So, a good uh, 77 years life. His dramatic writing is an ambiguous, restless, death haunted attempt to create a new drama appropriate to a broken and essentially iconoclastic age. What a long sentence to consider. So many, so many ideas and those, those ideas have been twisted into uh, one, one, one point. So, if uh, that one point uh, I, I tell you of, of this entire you know uh, uh, statement is that the person wants to say something and cannot say it. So, he remains ambiguous and uh, that that is uh, uh, the, the character of uh, the century particularly between the wars, uh, the first world war and the second world war and between the wars and what was the uh, gap between the two world wars in the, 90, in the 20th century? Uh, the first world war ended in 1917, the second uh, world war began in 1939, so it was 22 years. So, how, how did one live in those 22 years? The war ended but the clouds remained and the clouds were uh, thickening at that point of time and uh, nobody knew when the second world war would, be, would begin. The first world, world war was very dangerous to, uh, to, 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 to see, to, to confront and the, the second world war was much worse. In fact, uh, uh, there should be a separate discussion about the wars in another series, uh, particularly uh, if we uh, put the historical context, but Eliot was a child of the, the gap between the two world wars and uh, that is why this ambiguous sentence is there for us. He also preferred like his uh, compatriots uh, W. B. Yeats uh, particularly, uh, uh, you know verse drama, verse drama where poetry is used, uh, symbols are used, pictures are used, where statement is avoided and the meter is maintained, that is what verse drama is. And uh, one of the best examples uh, of his uh, verse drama is uh, the play called Murder in the Cathedral. And here you know you have more of a debate and you have a questioning by, by a character and you have a self questioning by the same character and towards the end the questioning and the self questioning are also given human shape. So, there are people uh, you know walking uh, 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 in his mind uh, telling him what to do and uh, he as a self knows that uh, the, the person who is in my mind and is walking about, uh, talking about me is not my friend, is my enemy. So, in a way when, when you have this kind of a mind where uh, other people fight in your mind using your mind as a terrain, as a, as a, as a field, then that is talking like uh, uh, T. S. Eliot. So, uh, he, he followed strict convention this particular play. The, the, this play appears very strange in English uh, writing. 
uh, this play appears to be a kind of religious statement. There are people on one side uh, who, who worship and who feel, feel helpless. Then there is a person who is a star and he might, you know, become a hero to them. And finally, the, uh, the, the star becomes uh, crisis ridden. He is not clear about it. And where do the common people go? So it's that kind of a convention that the writer is following. It appears to uh, more to be a Christian play. Uh, where common masses, you know, cannot uh, uh, wait for uh, God long enough. And uh, that person who will be a bridge between them and God is himself confused. So that kind of a play. And uh, you, you can think of uh, you know, this kind of a variation also in the uh, 20th century. Uh, this play is most influential if the least experimented. Uh, experiment, it didn't experiment about anything. It, it didn't say anything specific, but it left left a great influence on the mind of people. So, Eliot's six verse dramas largely because of the ritual formality of its structure and the set piece neoclassical confrontations between Thomas Beckett, his tempters, and his murderers. In this long statement, the important thing uh, are, are the last four, five six words. Thomas Beckett, who is the central character, and he has tempters. They, 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 they come forward as temptations. So, they, straight away you can think of the medieval drama in England. So, tempters, you know, come in the human form and they say, do this and uh, this, this will give you so much of pleasure. So, he, they are tempting him and then they turn into murderers. Actually, temptation is an idea. So is killing. So is death. So, maybe there are certain, you know, hidden ideas in, in one's mind and they tempt you uh, onto the path of uh, sin and uh, when, when you have been caught in that, then it's fine. But if you, if you resist, then these tempters actually will turn into your murderers. So that's the kind of a thing. Uh, <coughs> T.S. Eliot then uh, is, is uh, giving us an example of a uh, religious message that is not exactly religious, but is psychological. And uh, it's a very threatening kind of a message that T.S. Eliot gave you. The next playwright is uh, exactly the opposite of T.S. Eliot. Uh, the, the, this kind of a writing, this, this kind of a play, uh, one has not come across uh, in, in the European uh, dramatic tradition uh, and, and we picked it up from uh, Russia because in Russia at the turn of the century things were much more dark than they were elsewhere in, in, in Europe and, and in the rest of the world. This person is Maxim Gorky. He is born in 1868 and dies in 1936, exactly the period that we are discussing in terms of a dramatic presentation. Uh, he is called Maxim Gorky, but that's a pseudonym. And the actual name is Alexei Maximovich Peshko Gorky. Uh, uh, this is the title, and, and, and he knew Russian working class intimately. That's the distinctive part. I don't think, uh, apart from Bernard Shaw, there are others you know, who know about the working class so well. But uh, Bernard Shaw uh, will remain in, in, in the domain of the uh, upper middle class as, as, as a very courageous person, uh, as supporting entirely the uh, idea of change. But so far as Maxim Gorky is concerned, he will be with the masses always. He himself is a part of the masses. And uh, uh, he does not, uh, you know, preach as, as Bernard Shaw would preach. He would only show. And he would show pictures of helplessness. He would show pictures of ignorance. He would so, uh, show uh, pictures of, uh, you know, opposition to rationality and all those things. And uh, then, you know, through those pictures, he is able to create uh, some kind of an impact that, that that is not there in any of the writing of the period. So, I think uh, Maxim Gorky is an outstanding figure uh, in, in the uh, 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 dramatic uh, writers that we have discussed. <coughs> Only a few months of formal schooling, so that, that's what uh, schools he could not attend. He was a very poor, poor boy and uh, he didn't have a home to uh, belong to, to, to live in. And uh, his father was very cruel and uh, I think his father uh, threw him out. Then he had to spend his life, the early, early part of his life on the road. And uh, you know the kind of road that is there in, in, in Russia in the uh, latter half of the 19th century and early 20th century that uh, one is sure to you know, freeze uh, uh, to death because cold is as, as, as strong as that. And how uh, uh, Gorky would have survived in those conditions as, as a poor boy. He worked as a baker. 
he didn't uh, attend a school in the first place uh, for for long for a longer period sufficient uh, a long period but worked in a in a, in a bakery uh, he worked uh, at, at the dock uh, you know when the ships you know uh, uh, dock themselves uh, on on the corn, uh, on the shore of the sea and then they, they they require coolies so maybe he was a coolie there and he was a night watchman night watchman is a very, very uh, difficult duty during the day you have to sleep so how can you sleep when the whole world is awake and when the world is asleep then you are uh, watching you are you are, you are being a, you are being a part of watchman uh, you know uh, looking after the the safety of goods or or people at night he became a tramp without a home so you don't have a home therefore you are just going from one one place to another and wherever you stop there you you sit down and there you uh, lie down to sleep that's what a tramp is and uh, you can cover yourself i can cover myself as a tramp with whatever is around if there, if there are torn cl- uh, clothes there then uh, one would cover oneself with them and then somehow make do at night so doing odd jobs of all kinds during extensive wanderings and uh, you know this was the education in fact uh, uh, gorky uh, has written uh, about this life uh, at length and he called you know uh, uh, the, the the patterns of this life as his universities so his university was not uh, a place where uh, professors would come and you know uh, give uh, long talks to students and would engage them in discussions uh, his university was life so he went through all these all these difficult uh, positions in life and from there he learned the reality of the society so he became a tramp doing odd jobs all kinds during extensive wanderings the most famous of his plays uh, we discussed this play in the in, in the series is called lower depths now imagine this is such a dark title depth itself is uh, you know somewhere under the surface and when it is lower depths then it is much worse so uh, actually he is uh, not talking about the surface at all he is talking about beneath the surface and then he goes further down and uh, uh, what is the symbol of uh, uh, what does the the symbol lower depth signify it signifies the poor masses poor masses cannot really uh, live on the earth on the, on on the on the surface of the earth they have to hide themselves from cold from from, from other you know vagaries of weather plus the the cruelties to which they are subjected uh, you know by by the upper upper classes uh, in in their country so this play is shown and uh, the, these these uh, characters who are there i i just name them pepel vaska klishek vasily ka karpurna mikhail ivanov natasha all these characters they live in the same house and and, and they live in uh, sim- different corners of the house and they daily fight they, they daily discuss the, the daily they they, they, they uh, you know have, have long you know quarrels and that's how they live and it goes on and on they have no history they have no narrative they have only experiences and the experience are yeah, experiences are of merely fighting so this is what he's showing and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's one of the finest plays that 20th century gave uh, to, to to the world because this kind of a world was not known to the the mid, lower middle classes the middle middle classes the upper classes nobody knew about them and he became a cult figure in the 20th century set in the late 19th century in a dilapidated flop house and examines outcasts this is what the play is uplifted by a new boarder a new person who uh, comes to stay there or oh, the tramp luca he is the hero he himself is a tramp who knows uh, the, the luca is uh, formed after the 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 style uh, of of gorky himself because luca is able to see the the suffering the ignorant the the, the wandering uh, characters uh, in, in the flop house a house which is uh, where people live uh, you, you see uh, one can just just uh, uh, take on rent a cot a corner uh, and some people can can uh, sleep even under the cot who knows and they have to pay some money for it so it's that kind of a flop house and uh, that house is shown in its entirety in this play but then the another person comes to stay there and his name is luca and he looks at them and he talks to them about stories that he heard outside and these people are wondering whether he is saying wrong things or right things but then there is some hope there the tramp luca who listens to their stories advises them and spins illusions illusions are sometimes you know you protect you from madness if there are illusions then then you think that perhaps things will turn up well finally 
thus uh, offering them hope. So you give an illusion, you, you give them illusion about an open space, you give them illusions about light, sunshine, good water, good food and it is not there and it might you know give uh, a sense of uh, you know uh, uh, despair to people but then he says such, such, such a thing is possible and particularly in Russia uh, this, this, this play was written in the early part of the uh, 20th century and within 15-16 years of that part Russia has a revolution and this kind of a life is settled into one where people can survive better. So he, he saw this kind of a change occurring before his eyes. He was a part of the uh, Russian revolutionary process and he started in fact inspiring a large number of writers to write about poverty, to write about uh, social problems and to write about the element of resistance that is there in the masses. So he actually turned into a working class, a proletarian writer. Then finally, uh, I, I take up uh, Harold Pinter. Harold Pinter is the newest uh, uh, you know, writer uh, in, in our midst, uh, in, in, in this part. And uh, I have in fact uh, directly or indirectly uh, covered you know, the latter half of the 19th century, the First World War, the Second World War, the questions raised from there, writers uh, coming to terms with uh, that, that reality and that atmosphere. And then we have a writer who is born in 1930. The, the only writer who was born in the 20th century and he died recently, uh, 2008. So he went through the whole century from 1930 onwards and he was born in England. Where in England? Not in, 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 a, in a respectable home. He was born in a poor, poor uh, person's home and he was, he was born all, all, almost in slums. And there he saw a different kind of England. Uh, he was a uh, genius of a sort, a uh, very good mind and he would, uh, you know, uh, uh, not only write plays, he would also, uh, you know, write scripts for others. He, he could write, you know, he, he could do voiceovers and uh, he, he uh, learned the techniques of uh, filmmaking and uh, things like that. And uh, he uh, got Nobel Prize uh, also uh, in, the, in the 21st century, I think 2002 he got the Nobel Prize and uh, the writer became an uh, important critic of, uh, you know, imperialism in his time. And uh, you know that uh, uh, his time is uh, the, the era of uh, American imperialism. So he was a thorn in the flesh of uh, American imperialism. And uh, when he got the Nobel Prize, he, he could not attend the, uh, you know, uh, uh, function uh, to, to take the uh, prize. But then he wrote a letter and that letter was read out and it was full of the criticism of the American imperialist power. So that kind of a writer in our midst, and he was there till the other day, an important play written by him is titled The Birthday Party, written in 1957. What is birthday party? Uh, it's, it's, a, uh, it's an idea of celebration. And uh, generally, there has to be a wholesome family, uh, a comfortable family, loving uh, parents, uh, loving siblings and others. Uh, they all gather together and, and they celebrate somebody's birthday. And uh, that, that, that's, that's what uh, the Im, uh, impression that uh, is evoked in the play also. But whose birthday? And that is important because this person uh, uh, whose birthday they are uh, celebrating in, in the play actually uh, came from somewhere. I am using the word somewhere deliberately. Where somewhere? Well, nobody knows. Uh, people just... Uh, uh, want to talk to him, want, want to find him, find out wh whether he came from this or that place and he always gives a wrong answer or he gives a half answer and they, they keep, you know, all the time thinking and he has uh, then, you know, uh, decided to stay in a boarding house and there he is incommunicado. He doesn't talk to others but he is a nice, nice person. He is a sensitive person and all, all, always quiet and uh, one day, what happens is, and, and the place shows it very amusingly, one day two people from outside come and they say they will also stay in the same boarding house. Uh, this man is threatened, uh, he is feeling threatened by, by, by their presence, but then that uh, does not do anything to him. And uh, they, these two people along with the, uh, you know, the, the owner of the boarding house, it is a lady, they decide that they will celebrate his birthday. So they, 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 they prepare for his birthday celebrations 
and uh, you know uh, the person uh, uh, this, this person doesn't even know that uh, it's his birthday he says ah, it's not my birthday why do you celebrate it they said no no we'll celebrate it we know it's your birthday and then they starts you know the, the the preparations and then you know uh, in the middle of the celebrations uh, this person is broken mentally psychologically he is broken and uh, one doesn't know why why he is being subjected to a kind of uh, persecution by these two people who came from outside so what kind of birthday party is this there is a landlady who who, who is quite happy to to see that this boy whom she likes uh is is, is uh, you know is so important on that day uh, there is a beautiful girl who comes from outside in the neighborhood she also has watched him and she likes him too and she comes and they start you know uh, enjoying themselves and uh, there is a kind of a noisy uh, scene you know in in the middle of the birthday party but then finally uh, the birthday party ends uh, this person who was speaking very little even earlier he becomes completely quiet and in the morning what happens is that the two people who came from outside they are abducting him they are putting him in a wheelchair and they'll take him somewhere where will they take him now just see the the, the boy came from somewhere he lived here not in his home but in a boarding house then two uh, unknown people came and they got together along with the the, the uh, you know people in the in the boarding house and all of them decided in in in, in that scene to to celebrate his birthday and finally he is taken away where he is taken away nobody knows where he came from no one knows is it it's his birthday perhaps yes perhaps no so nothing is certain in the in the what does it show and this this is the play you know on on which uh, uh, we uh, this is the crux of the 20th century life that we don't know where we come from where we'll go what will happen to us will we will we be allowed to speak will we will we be allowed to celebrate shall we celebrate rightly or wrongly all these questions are packed into the structure of this play and uh, so far as harold pinter is concerned and uh, the, on this play he got the nobel prize it's his first full length play after that of course he wrote many and half plays and poetry and other things but then he is known for writing this play his the characters in the play stanley that's the boy i'm talking about lulu is that beautiful woman beautiful girl who comes from the neighborhood pete uh, is is, is the, uh, the the owner of the boarding house a uh, mccann is is an irish person he is more of a goon he he, he he can be a murderer meg 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 is the woman a uh, gold goldberg uh, he is another goon you know along with mccann mccann straight away suggests that it's an irish person a uh, goldberg suggests that that it's, it's a german and then you know uh, i i just uh, finish on on this particular you know uh, point that the play is called the comedy of menace two opposite words comedy is laughter menace is danger so how can comedy hide danger you keep thinking because nothing is certain in this play pinterest elements pinterest is from pinter the, the, the playwright the playwright is mixing words in such a manner that you don't understand but you are curious to know that is pinterest short sentences half sentences just words and uh, they are not connected that's what pinterest is so there are those are the elements such as ambiguous identity the 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 identity of the person who is he who is she why are they here what are the role they play all these questions are raised but not answered confusion of time uh, is, is this person you know uh, uh, going back to the past does he have a future will he be treated of the, the kind of ailment that he finally gets he goes completely quiet he doesn't talk but perhaps his his tongue has been taken out who knows nothing is certain but then the time is confusing where will he stay now he is being abducted he is being taken to hospital hospital for us maybe they, 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 they will kill him there so nobody knows what's going to happen in future so what i call is that this play actually is uh, an expression of dark political symbolism this is how the ordinary people are going to be reduced to in a state of helplessness and this is the crux of the 20th century so we thought uh, uh, as 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 a team of uh, you know work uh, le- lecturing in the series we thought that uh, we should uh, be able to uh, share this dramatic truth of the 20th century 
the, the poetic drama, the prose drama, the, the Pinterest kind of a drama and, and I hope uh, the questions that are being raised through these playwrights and I'll request uh, the fellow team members also to, to give uh, one more, uh, one each uh, more discussion of uh, what was done, what questions were raised, so that this, fine, fi this, this uh, series is finally made to reach its end. I hope you, you have had a view of uh, uh, this long period of 100, 120 years, uh, you know, in, in, in European dramatic history, and uh, you can always, you know, uh, grasp it and uh, put it to use by comparing it with what happened in the drama of the other countries and cultures. Thank you.